for UT Rio Grande Valley. They've had a couple scrimmages in an exhibition game. Uh, this is really their first live game in front of a crowd, so see if that affects them at all early in this game. Mia wins the tip, so the Huskers going to get the first look at it here to start this one. Williams inside to Mia. Goes up strong. Draws the foul. So quickly going inside. Yeah, that, that's just a, an aspect that Coach Hardberg didn't didn't have last year, being able to really you know run some high low stuff with with the true four and five. You know, Alec was was kind of the four last year with Rink Mass. Both were six eight or six nine, but but having six eleven and seven one just gives them a different element, and they took advantage of that first possession. Foul was on Tommy Gankuhag, his first. Braxton Mia here to the line. Transfer from Washington. Misses both of them. Dual Hakeem with the ball here for the Vaqueros. Thorne on the drive. Kick out to Davis. Too strong. Loose ball goes the Huskers' way. Williams going to push. A nice set by Rio Grande Valley. Kind of pinned in the backside for an open corner three. They're going to be very dependent on the three-point shot. One of many threes we're going to see go up tonight for the Vaqueros. Gary, take to the rim. No good. Back the other way we go. The second possession for Nebraska where they've been able to get the basketball into the lane. See Burke doing a nice job getting out and defending at 6-11. Taken away by Gary. And you call a charge on Jawan Gary. And Fred Hoiberg does not like it. The crowd does not like it. Here's another look at it here. Yeah, I, I did not think that the defender was set. Tough break for Nebraska. Gary picking up a personal foul. He got in some foul trouble in the exhibition contest, so he'll have to be careful with the early foul here. Inside to Gankuhag. Tried to kick it out, but off the backboard. Another turnover here for UTRGV to start this one. We've seen Nebraska's defense. They're going to double the post, no matter if it's an effective post score or not. It's just kind of the staple of what they do. Got the double team forced to turnover. Williams for three, knocks it down. Huskers on the board. Yeah, went under the screen. Bryce Williams very effective, over a 42% career three-point shooter. Abdul Hakeem on the other end, too strong. Mia with the board. Another good look by UT Rio Grande Valley. And another offensive foul. Going to get Wooster on the... Yeah, I think you're going to get off. me on the, on the moving screen oh, there. Okay. Yep. yep, it was on Mia. Yeah, again, just it's the focus, especially early in the year, is moving ball screens, moving on dribble handoffs. It's important to stay set. Travel. Another turnover. A really good intensity to start this game. Both teams are in a stance, defending, communicating. UT Rio Grande Valley is kind of in the state of Nebraska for the week. They'll they'll venture north and play Creighton on Wednesday. Tough start for them on the road. Williams jumper is good. Back to back buckets for Bryce Williams. Yeah, again, coming off that ball screen. Williams got himself to the free throw line for the pull up. And a moving screen on the other end. This one on Trey Miller. Yeah, again, that, just that, that focal point of officiating is to try to eliminate some of the rub screens and handoffs, which has given offensive players an advantage for the second straight year. That's really been the. the focal point of the officiating in the offseason. season. 
Williams on the drive and one. Make it seven points for Bryce Williams to start this game, and he's going to head to the line for a free throw. And we talked about it a little bit. I, you know, Williams is so versatile. Last year, he is, you know, was kind of got moved into that point guard spot late in the year, especially late games or foul trouble. And I, I felt like it affected his scoring a little bit. Adding Worcester and Aaron Euless getting eligible allows him to go off the ball where he's just such a versatile player. He can shoot the three. You've seen that. You've come off the ball screen, and now he's able to, to go off a cut, get in the lane, and get a three-point play. You just see his versatility so far to start this game. In seven minutes, he's going to you know potentially be up to eight points. Very good free throw shooter, knocks it down. Eight, nothing Nebraska, all courtesy of Bryce Williams to start this one. Abdul Hakeem over to Gankyhag for three. Gets that one to go. Andrew Morgan has checked in for the Huskers. Eight to three Nebraska here in the early goings. Williams pulls it from deep. Off the mark on that one. Good job by Nebraska getting back that quick three. Uh, UT Rio Grande Valley to get out in conversion where they really want to play, and then they take those open three-pointers early in the offense. Loose ball goes to the Vaqueros, and it's a bucket by Cliff Davis. So another three-pointer for UTRGV. Yeah, good job of, of kind of pinning in on the backside. They kind of back-tapped it off the offensive glass. Leads to their second three-pointer. Williams, no good in the lane. Gets his own miss. Loose ball. Carroll's come away with it. And steps out of bounds. Another turnover for the Vaqueros. They're up to five here to start this one. That will take us to our under 16 media timeout. 15-41 left in the first. Eight to six. Nebraska leading you to see if Bryce Williams. He has all eight points and he is doing it every which way he can on the floor. Yeah, scored uh, from the three, from the mid-range. Got uh, in the lane for uh, N1 and got a free throw. So as you <laughs> mentioned, a complete offensive package so far in four minutes of basketball. That's what he does. Uh, and it's what they knew they were getting, but he was uh, very, very efficient last year. Did a lot of different things for the Huskers, but uh, Coach Hoiberg expecting him to take another step in his game this year here in uh, year number two with Nebraska. And I think that's what Coach Hoiberg is known for is, is player development. And I think they've done a really good job in the transfer portal. With, with players that have come in and, and then they see that progress and you know venture on to play professional basketball and NBA and I think that's just going to keep building for Coach Hoiberg and the staff and Bryce is another example of that. Connor is in for Nebraska. Kick out to Williams. Pump fake. Out to Wooster. Back out to Williams. Out of bounds. Yeah, Khalil Fennell, the coach of UT. Rio Grande Valley comes out in a zone there. Kind of caught Nebraska off guard. A lot of good ball movement, unfortunately. We've turned it over late in the shot clock. Miller for three. No good. Gary with the rebound. Now back to man-to-man -man defense. Inside to Morgan. Strong take and finish by Andrew Morgan. His first bucket as a Husker. Yeah, Morgan got the switch and was able to take the smaller defender into the post. Good patience. We see Morgan, a little like Mass from a year ago, can, can really be versatile, can kind of play five and four, score in and out. Kick out to Fleming. Loose ball. Wooster comes up with it. Up to Gary. He goes up and draws the foul. Get Fleming on this one. So Gary will head to the line for two. Nebraska.
Nebraska did a good job of, of taking the long three-point miss and getting out and transition offense. Juwan Gary was a player who really improved his offensive game a season ago. Set a career best in points, field goal percentage, and free throw percentage as he knocks the first one down. Yeah, Gary's ability to, to score in the half court is probably the area of his game that has improved the most. You know, out in transition, still rebounds, alley-oops. Really good offensive, defensive rebounder, but the half court ability to, to catch and shoot, create in the half court set is, is really where he spent a lot of time. And his free throw shooting percent also has improved. Just see the countless hours in the gym working. It was overall a big improvement for the team last year, the free throw line. Gary goes two for two and out of bounds. Another turnover. Vaquero's up to six now. Yeah, Nebraska's defense, if you haven't played against them, it's it's a little unique. They they kind of cut the floor in half, really try to take top shoulder away, not allow middle drive, kind of over-rotate, get to be a lot of traffic in the lane. Aaron Eulis into the game, along with Gavin Griffiths. Here's Andrew Morgan. He'll draw the foul. The Nebraska's doing a good job of you know, really taking advantage of that size mismatch on the block. Second time Morgan's been able to post. Even though he didn't score, it's another foul. You know, 14 minutes to go. UT Rio Grande Valley with five team fouls. So you're just a couple away from the bonus. Gary for three. Too strong. Morgan pulls down the rebound. And he goes back up and in. Offensive board and put back for Morgan. Huskers up 14 to six. Yeah, productive minutes off the bench so far for Morgan. Another three off the mark. Offensive rebound. And a foul on the other end. That is Howie Fleming Jr. Yeah, and talking to the Nebraska staff earlier, they thought you know, being able to defensive rebound was going to be a, such a key part of this game. And you see Rio there just kind of pinning you on the backside and doing a great job of getting up, securing it, and finishing. Fleming with a shot for chance for an and one here. Yeah, Fleming's returning player, captain on the team. Misses the free throw. Do we have a lane violation here? Yeah, lane. I think it, Morgan might have been in early. Fleming will get another chance. And makes the most of it. So Nebraska started big, and now they're going to go a little smaller here. Sam Hoiberg in, got a season. Gavin Griffiths is actually their four, played around Morgan at the five. So very different look than what Nebraska started with. New list to Hoiberg. To Sejan. And another foul on the screen. This one on Hoiberg. How much of it is for these players just get to feel for how they're going to call it? Yeah, it's... You, I, Watch practice a week, 10 days ago, and it's just something that you have to just keep reminding your players that you must jump stop and give defenders a half a step. And it's, it's really changed because for, for a decade, it was not called a, a moving screen. Now it is getting focused on. So it's just something that the players have to adjust to because referees obviously are, are, are focused on calling it. Ramey's three makes it a two-point game. Eulis over to Griffiths. Griffiths back out to Eulis. Eulis in the lane, bounce pass into Morgan. Again, another physical bucket for Andrew Morgan. He is not afraid of the physicality. Yeah, Eulis did a really nice job of, of getting deep into the lane to create that opportunity for Morgan. There you see a long rebound, which is going to get Nebraska out into transition. You see the pace that UT Rio Grande Valley wants to play at. They, they'll go up and back. Andrew Morgan, oh, just rims out. 
He is being very aggressive here on the offensive end. Draws the foul, he'll head to the line. Yeah, averaged you know, 13 points a year ago at North Dakota State, about eight rebounds. All-conference performer in the summit, so you know, it's used to being efficient around the basket. I've yet to see some of his versatility. He can step away and shoot. Another aspect of his offense that's going to fit very well in Coach Hoiberg's system. Played with Sam Hoiberg, or Sam Griesel. And uh, I asked Sam Griesel about what Nebraska fans can expect out of Morgan, and he said a guy that's going to play hard every single second he's on the court. Well, knowing as a Nebraska kid that played here and watched it, he'll be a fan favorite because certainly they appreciate, and you can already see the energy that they have around him just coming in and, and really playing hard and just making tough, hard-nosed plays will, will bode well for him to be a fun player to follow this season. So Morgan's got seven points. He'll head to the bench, gets a nice ovation from the Husker fans here inside PBA. 17-12, to 12, Nebraska leading UTR GV. We approach the 12-minute mark. Braxton Mia back into the game. Kick out. Fleming for three. That one rims out. That's yeah, already 10 three-pointers for Rio. Uh, 10 attempts and eight minutes of basketball. So very fun system. He said expect a lot of three-point shots. Loose ball. And foul is going to be on a Siegen, but a nice hustle play by Fleming. So it will be UTR GB's ball. On the other side of this, we go to our under 12 media timeout, 11.45 left in the first 17 to 12. Nebraska leading UTR GB here on Big Ten Plus. Last season, he said uh, last year was probably the most fun time he's had coaching a basketball team. And he says this is a similar group to what he had last year. They're old and they... They got old, and they're trying to stay old. Yeah, and, and good versatility, offensive skill um, at all positions. You know, Coach Hoiberg, they finished third a year ago. He was the Big Ten Coach of the Year. And it's, you know, important for them to, to continue that trajectory that they're on, trying to get back to the NCAA tournament and, and maybe win in that first game. Wooster out of bounds. Vaccaro's ball here. Stribbled off the foot. Yeah, that's Nebraska's seventh turnover, and UT Rio Grande Valley has six. So certainly both offenses have been sped up so far to start this half. Jump shot no good. Decision on the rebound. A good job by Maya there. You just see his 7-1 presence forced the... And another turnover... That's one of the things that Coach Hoiberg, Coach Hoiberg emphasizes is valuing possessions and taking care of the basketball. He won't like the stretch. Yeah, they, they only averaged about 10 a game last year. So to be at eight early speaks to some of the new players, new rotations. Certainly the chemistry is not you know, where, where it will be in the middle and late season. Three on the way, and it is good for Fleming. Worcester got held up on the screen. Fleming does a great job of finding the space and knocking it down. Four three-pointer for the Vaqueros. Four of 12. The Siegen, open lane over to Williams. Put back no good by Mia. Here comes the Vaqueros, kick out. Davis, step back three. They're heating up. Another three-pointer for UTRGV. Up to five now. Good job taking that rebound out and pushing in transition. Kick out to Wooster. On the take. Turn around. Nice finish. Wooster, good patience there. Being able to get both feet in the lane. One-point ball game. 1918 Nebraska, another three on the way for Fleming. Short, loose rebound, long rebound, and another three pointer. That one is good by Cliff Davis. Those long rebounds. Williams, on the other end, stuck in the rim. 
Maybe. Jump ball B. Possession UTRGB. Yeah, you mentioned those offensive rebounds. That's you know UT. That's what they do. They they really you know all five go to the backboard. They use that as part of their offense, and it's led to two of their six three pointers have come off of that ability to get that second shot opportunity. Another three in the corner on the way. That went off the mark. Butte and Gel back into the game for Nebraska. Mia inside, goes up, bounces off the rim, but we got a foul inside on Cliff Davis. Yeah, they're going to get Davis holding Worcester, and it's going to be the seventh team foul, so Worcester will go to the line for one and one. The Huskers will be in the bonus the rest of the way. How do you like the pace of this one so far? Yeah, Coach Hoiberg, you know, that <coughs> UT Rio Grande Valley probably doesn't have a, a great name. It's not a team that Nebraska has, has played a lot of for familiarity. They were in the WAC a year ago, which, you know, the WAC has traditionally been a, a pretty strong conference moving to the Southland this year. But, uh, you know, in this press conference, Coach Hardenberg mentioned that this is a game that Nebraska was going to be challenged in, that they could really score. They played a unique style that was going to be hard to guard this early in the season, and you're, you're seeing that so far 11 minutes into this game. So we had a lane violation, so Wooster got second shot here, knocks down the first one, so get a second one here. Goes two for two. Tie ball game at 21. Tipped away by Wooster. Steal by Wooster. Good defensive play there. Wooster working inside. And we got a foul inside. It's going to be on Isaiah Bargainer. 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 Or that. Sorry. <laughs> off, just off the bench. May is 0 for 2 from the foul line. It's 1 and 1 here. Too strong on that one. Abdul Hakim here. The ball being guarded by Uton Joe. Over to Ramey. Fleming on the take. And we have another foul. Be on Braxton Mia. Coach Hoiberg chatting with the officials about it. That will take us to our under eight media timeout. 7.59 left in the first. We are all time. And, and like I said, it's, it's kind of a unique style. Instead of just trying to get 50-50 where you're trying to get shoulder to shoulder, they actually pin you in on the backside where they, they really just try to wall you in and expect a long rebound to come over the top. So it's, it's, it's kind of a little different approach that Nebraska tried to drill to simulate. And, you know, so far they just haven't done a good job. And, and then it's effort. You just got to secure, you know, with two hands and do a good job rebounding. But then once you give up a rebound, you got to get matched up. As you mentioned, sometimes it's hard in a scramble situation. You got to communicate and match and and try to run shooters off the three-point line. Howie Fleming Jr. knocks down the second free throw, gives UTRGV the one-point lead, 22-21. Williams out to Wooster. Gary over to Williams. Williams. 
Five on the shot clock. Wooster, kick out to Gary for three. No good, rebound. UTRGV. A good defensive possession. Barjanet for three, no good. Back the other way we go and Wooster's tripped up. Abdul Hakeem called for the foul here. Again, Wooster gonna head back to the line. And then you see the disadvantage of, of UT Rio Grande Valley going to the offensive backboard. They send all five, so if you can secure that long rebound, it gets you out into your conversion offense. So Gary gets to the free throw line and conversion. Now you see Worcester able to push and draw the foul to get back to the free throw line. So Nebraska can use that to their advantage a little bit if they can rebound that first missed shot. Wooster's got four points, two for two from the free throw line. Again, Huskers will be in the bonus. Rest of the way, misses the front end of the one-on-one. -on -one, one -on -one. Yeah, Nebraska is now six of 11 from the free throw line. Kick out three, steps out of bounds. Cliff Davis in the corner. The Vaqueros had had several turnovers there to start the game. They had done a little bit better taking care of the basketball in that stretch. Yeah, kind of an unforced there, just not real familiar with the court. Got too deep in that corner. Wooster on the drive. Nice move. And lay in. Yeah, Sejan uh, on the court for Nebraska really spread the floor. And an easy bucket there for Trey Miller. Yeah, good job by Miller. Recognized he wasn't picked up in transition. Attacks the rim for the basket. Wooster gets bumped. Heads to the floor. Loose ball. Williams comes away with it. Inside to Morgan. And another foul. Kind of a harem scarum possession there. Yeah, I thought Bryce Williams did a nice job. Instead of panicking, he just was really strong with the basketball, kind of getting trapped on that sideline and was able to make the skip pass crossed. Second foul on Cliff Davis. So Morgan heads to the free throw line. He had seven points. Knocks down the first one. Yeah, Nebraska's only you know, attempted four threes. They've, UT Rio Grande Valley's done a good job of, of really taking away their perimeter shooters where we've been forced to kind of play through our posts, which, you know, Morgan has been productive. Even our guards, Worcester's have been able to kind of get in there and play off two feet and be physical at the rim. We've Nebraska has gotten to the free throw line, but now only 7 of 13. Fleming's three off the mark. Williams pulls down the rebound. Over to Griffiths. To the rim. Up and in. A great take by Griffiths out in transition. Two-point lead for Nebraska. Kick out to Miller. Corner three is good by DK Thorne. A great ball movement. The extra pass to find Thorne in the corner for the three. Williams inside draws another foul. Williams will head back to the free throw line. Leading the way with eight points. One of the top free throw shooters in the league last year. It's under 85%. He's been good at the free throw line his entire career. Here comes Aaron Eulis in for Wooster.
Nine points for Williams. Yeah, both teams have played a lot of different players. Nebraska's played ten. Two for two goes Williams. He's into double figures with ten. Rio has played ten as well. Miller with the ball, working on a Sejan. Kick over to Fleming. Five on the shot clock. Kick out. Thorne, another three ball. Rims out. Offensive board. Can't get the putback to go. Trey Miller with the hustle play there. So the missed corner three. Just got Morgan kind of late there on the block out. Two fouls for Andrew Morgan. Did get in some foul trouble during his career at North Dakota State. He's just a physical player. Miller knocks down the first one. Ties it up at 28. Youped and gel back in for Morgan. Miller goes two for two. Gives the Vaqueros back the lead, 29-28. Back and forth we go. Under five left to play in the first. Extra pass to a Seijin, too strong. A good look for a Seijin, just not able to knock it in. Good job by Uchi Rio Grande Valley, one and done. And too strong inside. Seijin draws the foul. On Marshall. Strumo. Yeah, player control foul, so it will not be free throws, but the referees are going to review the contact, see if there's anything flagrant. What are they looking for here in, in this replay? Yeah, just anything to the head area, you know, kind of an unnecessary act, whether you know, be a, an elbow or a shoulder. Um, I did not see it. They they kind of collided off the ball. Kind of a it can be a, a hook and a hold too. It's like I mean, a push. There you, there you see, certainly push, but I I think it was not to the head and neck, but it was an unnecessary basketball act. So that would be the interpretation of the officials. Did that warrant a flagrant, even though it wasn't to the head and neck, but it certainly looked like a kind of an unnecessary push. They are going to circle up here and chat about it. Again, foul on Destromo. Hasn't been a physical game. 17 fouls called already with five minutes to go in the first half. Nebraska's been to the free throw line 15 times. Rio's been there five. So it looks like it's a play on. So certainly if that push would have been to the head and neck area, I think that would have escalated that to a flagrant because it, it was to the chest. It's a just a common foul. And another foul on the Vaqueros. Gonna get Fleming on this one. His second foul. Yeah, I was wrong. That's now the 13th foul for UT Rio Grande Valley. Lots of free throw opportunities for Nebraska here in the first half. Williams back to the line. He's got 10 already in this one. Rare miss for him from the free throw line. 
Yeah, Nebraska is now 9 of 16, so certainly has taken advantage of their opportunities. Makes the second one. Tied back up at 29. Destromo over to Fleming. Miller, extra pass. Over in the corner. Kick out. Steps on the line. Yeah, second time we've seen that. Just a little unfamiliar with the court. I do think PBA, they, they, the benches, it's such a great newer building, so everything's built with a little bit more space, so that allows the players' benches to be a little deeper and the fans on the other side to be a little deeper away from the court. And I think the players sometimes lose a feel for how much space they do have there and end up stepping on that sideline quite a bit. The siege in deep three drains it. Yeah, that's what Connor can do. Certainly very effective at Wisconsin shooting the three the last two years. BK over to Griffiths. Reverse lay-in is good. Nebraska does a good job of creating that turnover. That leads out to Griffiths' layup. Huskers on a 6-0 run. UT. Rio Grande Valley needs to just slow down, have a good possession here. Fleming for three, quiets the crowd. A tough shot by Fleming. Griffiths was kind of in his face, but just very confident. And another foul on the Vaqueros. DK Thorne. Pick up a foul here. That will take us to yeah, see ben. lots of fouls on the offensive end or on the Vaqueros. Lots of free throws. How much can that maybe disrupt, disrupt the flow of the game and what Nebraska wants to do offensively? Yes, yeah, certainly Nebraska's doing a good job of, of attacking downhill, and, and they've, get, they've been able to get some hand check calls and get to the foul line, you know, which has, I think, helped them now. You know, statistically, they're only 10 of 17, so they've, you know, if they're going to get there, they have to make those. The good thing for Nebraska, I think it, it helps – because it, it takes UT Rio Grande Valley out of their transition offense when you can you know, make your second free throw. It allows you to set your defense, and we've went on a little run here, or Nebraska's went on a run here. For Rio Grande Valley, they just got to stay what they're doing. They're they're very dependent on the three-point shot, which you know they've made eight out of 21, which has kept this game close. Under three to play. Under 10 on the shot clock. Extra pass over to Fleming. Take it away by Euless. A good half court defensive possession for Nebraska there for us to turn over. Williams for three. Fleming working at the top of the key. Back to Genki Hag. Three no good. Out of bounds will stay Vaccaro's ball. Kind of a bad break for Nebraska there. Good job rebounded it by Berkey. Just size 16 shoe on the line. <laughs> Fleming draw the foul on Euless. Yeah, right, that was Ramey. Yeah, good inline, out of bounds execution for UT Rio Grande Valley, and that's you know a little bit of uh, the dilemma that you're in early in the season. Not a lot of tape, as I mentioned. Uh, you know, pregame only have had three kind of close scrimmage slash exhibition games, so Nebraska didn't have access to a lot of their you know early game video so it's hard to get your team ready for what types of sets out of bounds plays 
you know, player personnel. You can kind of pull some video from other years. Uh, they have five Division One transfers. So you can kind of go into the vault and find some video on personnel. But in terms of out-of-bounds plays, uh, just good execution there. One of those D1 transfers right here is KT Ramey, who transfers from DePaul, fifth-year senior. Gets the roll on the first one. Knocks them both down. Back to a two-point game, 36-34. Just over two left in the first half. Wooster back into the game for Nebraska. Williams will go back to the free throw line. Draws the foul on Miller. Had a lot of UTR GV players with the two fouls. And now 15 fouls and a half, but Nebraska's doing a good job of taking advantage of some matchups. You know, Williams is playing the three at 6-7, able to kind of post the smaller defender. 13 points, and are up to 14 now with the roll on that free throw to lead the way for the Huskers. Seven for eight from the free throw line. Make it eight for nine. Up to 15. Under two to play here in the first. Four point lead for Nebraska. And Jawan Gary. Too physical on that one. He's just kind of Came off the Ivers, kind of an Iverson cut that Ellen Iverson used to do that a lot where they run you off of kind of an elbow screen. Gary's just kind of trailing it, was forced to grab. It's going to be Gary's second foul. Sam Hoiberg checks in for Gary. So Nebraska now has Gary with two, Morgan with two, and Mia with two. Fleming misses the free throw. 90 seconds left in the first half. Wooster, kick out to Piunt and Joe. Williams on the take. And back to the line goes Bryce Williams, making a living at the free throw line here in the first half. There you see. Trey Miller. Barricade did a good job of kind of holding this post position which gave Williams a chance to kind of drive into that space. Third foul for Miller. Miller was a little late rotating over, certainly not vertical. Nine for 10 from the free throw line for Bryce Williams. Up to 16 here in the first half. I think, you know, Williams certainly has been the most consistent offensive player. I thought Morgan, you know, came in and was really effective and then picked up that second foul and has been sitting for kind of the remainder of the, the first half. You know, Worcester, um, a point guard, has seven points on, on two shootings, been able to get to that free throw line a little bit and take advantage of being in the double bonus. Tenth made free throw for Williams. It's up to 17 here in the first half. Good pass out to Miller. One minute left in this one. Corner three from Miller. Rims out. You can gel with the rebound. Nice play 
for the Huskers. Bryce Williams with the lay-in to finish it. Well, Bierke in, enters offense as a 6-5 and catches Bryce on the back cut again. Slipped out of his hands. Bryce still got the ball to roll in for him. Three for Fleming. Rims out. Offensive rebound. Yankee Hag with the putback. And one. Yeah, there's no block out there for Nebraska, who's kind of in defensive rotation. So Birke was on the back side with two to block out. Boy, they crash the boards hard. Yeah, all five, every possession. Really forces you to stay disciplined as a as a defense to contest shooters and block out. You know, it feels like they've UT RGV has been better on the backboard. That's that's the, they're only their fifth offensive rebound. It feels like they have a few more. Or excuse me, now that's six, but Nebraska only has four, so doing a good job there of matching Nebraska on the backboard. Nebraska calls a timeout here with 14.8 seconds left. Coach Hoiberg going to draw something up. But you don't want to take the shot too early. You want this to be the last possession of the half and you know, be smart, not go to the backboard and go over somebody's back where you foul and give UTRGV a, a chance to get to the free throw line. For UT Rio Grande Valley, you're you know, trying to switch and do the things that you've done in the first half and try to play without fouling here. And then finish with a rebound. You see they're going to trap. Williams kick out to Griffiths. Over to a Asijin. Knocked away. Last shot. No good. So, so far in 20 minutes. They were picked to finish eighth in the Southland Conference, but a lot of that is just the unknown of this roster. I would be very surprised if this team is an eighth place finishing team in the Southland Conference. A very quick whistle here to start the second half. Young Can you hag. There's the answers to the whether or not you're going to see physical defense. You know, they're just being very physical with Nebraska's cutters, ball handlers. Williams baseline jumper, no good. Loose ball inside. Bear cave back up and in. Good job by Bear K just staying active on that backside. Rebound for his first basket. It's a six point for Nebraska for second chance points. Pump eight, baseline drive, kick out. Extra pass, three in the corner, short. Williams at the board. Kick out to Wooster. Baseline drive. Nice take and gets the roll. Wooster up to nine. And Nebraska went back to their, their original starting lineup, which is their big lineup, and it's paid dividends. You saw the Burke with the offensive rebound put back, and there he said Maya, just by being big, it allowed Wooster to kind of drive around his post defender and lay it in. Just having that size, length, and physicality around the rim, good things can happen. Nebraska with a 10-point lead. With a minute, minute or so into the second half. Miller on the take. Floater is good. Yeah, good ball screen action. Nebraska did a poor job of ball screen coverage. Miller able to get in for the easy two. Gary looking inside to Mia. Gives it up to Williams behind the back. My goodness. Bryce Williams. 21 points. Yeah, the change of direction dribble is great, but the finish might be even better. It was just a great finish over the taller post defender. Dolakim, kick out to Genki Hag. He knocks down the three. Seven point game. 
48-41, Nebraska. That's the second three now for Genki Hag. Just does a good job of kind of spreading Nebraska's defense at that five spot. Williams for three. Off the rim. Abdul Hakeem inside, off the glass. No. Newton Joe with the rebound. Five boards for Bear K. Williams inside. Again, doing work inside. That's the other thing I, I really like about this big lineup. Gary's your three, so, so a, a two has to go and, and defend Bryce Williams. You see it there, his versatility of just putting him on the block against the smaller defender. Here it is again. They're going to post Williams. Last year's lineup would have gave them the ability to do this as Gary played a lot of four for Nebraska a year ago. Gary looking to bounce past to Mia, but tossed away. Three on the way. No good. An offensive rebound. And Wooster with the foul. And there you'll see it. If you see this replay, you, you'll, you'll see him. See how you see Rio Grande pins you in. Instead of trying to get around to the inside, they actually pin you to the outside, knowing that those three-point attempts are going to be long rebounds. So really unconventional in terms of Nebraska getting ready to block out. You almost have to try to block out the other way and take outside position away, which is not what you're not, taught. Not typical, correct. <laughs> so it's it's really an abnormal style. Lose ball, Wooster on the floor for it, but out of bounds. Good hustle play. But when teams are so dependent on the three, you're, you know that rebound is going to come off long majority of the time. And of the 35 field goal attempts for UT Rio Grande Valley, 28 of them have been three. So, so really is a big staple of their offense. Gavin Griffiths into the game for Nebraska. And a foul on Griffiths. Sideline out of bounds here for the Vaqueros. Abdullah Keem over to Genku Hag. Another three for Tommy Genku Hag. Cuts it to six. Williams gets some space inside the three-point line. He is just doing everything here tonight. He's up to 25 points, scoring all over the floor. Yeah, they just kind of, Gary makes a good basket cut there, draws two defenders. Williams does most open shot he had all game. And <laughs> It's okay, I'll knock it in for my 25th point. And then Rio turns it over on a impound violation. Gary pulls the three and drains it. Fleming to the rim. Griffiths over to Williams for three. Long rebound, Griffiths runs it down inside to Morgan. He's gonna draw the foul. And that'll be the third on Daniel Hag, which has had a really big impact in this game offensively in the second half, making two three. Yeah, it certainly has shown his versatility. And there you see him able to, to post when Nebraska plays their bigger lineup, but shot a little ball screen, crossover, layup, been able to get out, get out to the three-point line, take advantage of his perimeter shooting. Nebraska's needed him to, to play well to, to build this 11-point lead, and they'll, they'll need him to continually score as UT Rio Grande Valley is, is you know, so dependent on the three-point shot, they're going to make another run at Nebraska here. 25 points for Bryce Williams. That ties a career high as a Husker in a Husker uniform. He had 25 last year against Oregon. 
Andrew Morgan quickly to the rim and draws another foul. Hit quote, quote Agua on that one. Hey, Coach Hoiberg designed uh, having the, the timing of, of the basketball allowed that media timeout to happen when they were taking the ball out underneath our basket. Nice little design. Got Morgan at elbow touch. You, first half you saw Morgan's ability to play with his back to the basket. There you saw his ability to face and drive. Fred Hoiberg loves those versatile bigs. Yeah, if you're going to play a five-out motion offense, it's, it's so important that your post players can pass and move and screen and ultimately shoot to give your other players spacing to allow Williams to you know kind of do what he can do. You know, if you if you can't shoot or spread the floor at the four and the five, it's it's really hard to play in a motion style system. So, you know, the portal and tra uh, college transfers has made it so much easier to to really look at just video and finding the players in the portal that really fit what you do, not predicting high school recruiting at 17 or 18, how they're going to develop and fit. You really have concrete answers on what, what college players can do, and I think that's why they've done such a good job in the portal of finding guys that fit what they're doing. Good defensive possession there for Nebraska. Wooster back the other way. Gary pulls it down. Loose ball inside. Kick out to Griffiths for three. No good. Loose ball foul. We'll be on Trey get, Miller. Yeah, we're going to get Miller pushing Worcester here on the long rebound. Who Toyberg talked about Raleigh, Raleigh Worcester, how he just makes winning plays when you need it the most. We've yeah, already seen that so far in, in just two games in a Husker uniform. Yeah, been on a lot of winning teams and played a lot of basketball. And Coach Hoiberg you know, mentioned a lot last year. Just being old right now in college basketball is important with just what the COVID and, and it's hard to win with 18-year-olds. Wooster, nifty little turnaround finish. The 22 used to be old in college basketball. Now the players are 23, 24, 25 years old, and that's a big difference. And Wooster's one of those kids that have played five years of college basketball. Ooh, nice feed. And finish. By Abdul Hakeem, Hakeem. Stops a run for Nebraska. It's a 9 0 run. Nebraska was on. Gary inside. Tips it back up. Loose ball. Vaqueros come away with it. Thorne over to Fleming. Back over to Thorne for three. Too strong. Morgan pulls down the rebound. Yeah, good execution by Rio there, getting the middle penetration kicked out for the three. Wooster on the take draws another foul. That went on Quo Agua. Fourth foul for Agua. A little bit of post foul trouble. Trey Miller and Agua both with four for the Vaqueros. Bryce Williams leading the way with 25, and Andrew Morgan into double figures with 10. Wooster with 10. So Genkyu Hack is going to come back with three. So certainly. Something to follow. Nebraska's opened up a 14-point lead here in the second. Yeah, also a nine rebounding advantage, 29 to 20. I feel like the second half, Nebraska's done a, a little better job of securing the backboard, limiting Rio to one shot. Also UT Rio Grande Valley, only one, one three made here in the second half. Check that two. 
certainly they are not shooting it as well as they shot it in the first half. Bullock keen to the rim, kick out to Thorne. He corrects you there. DK Thorne knocks down to three. Big shot by Thorne. Cutting that deficit to 11. Morgan Conford inside. Wooster, bounce pass over to Griffiths for three. No good. He just hasn't found his rhythm tonight. Another three on the way. Back to back for DK Thorne. And just like that, it's an eight point game. You said it. That's what they can do. Yeah, teams that shoot threes will go on runs both directions. Just a lot of averages. You're going to miss a few in a row. Williams, the easy lay in. I say easy, but he goes to the ground. Officials call a timeout to let him get to his feet. He's going to head over to the bench. It looks like he might be cramping, maybe. Maybe he stayed down. Hopefully he's hard to see. We were kind of screened off from by the... Uh, by the goal. 27 points, though, for Bryce Williams, and that is a career high in a Husker uniform. Yeah. Being told it's a cramp. By stretching. Like I said, when I watched him walk off, he went right over the trainer like he was going to get stretched, which is always a good sign versus going back to the locker room. You listen to run the point. For Nebraska, a siege in for three. That's good. His second three on the night. Yeah, and that's what Connor was brought in to do. You know, Kese and C.J. Walter a year ago, you know, just was so important for Nebraska from that three-point line. It's going to be important to you know, find that production this year, and a siege certainly capable of making a bunch of threes. K.T. Ramey with a nice take on the other end. 65-54. Morgan working inside. Turnaround jumper short. Dula Hakeem inside. Goaltending. On the Newton gel. So count the basket. And we'll take us to our media timeout. 65 56 Nebraska leading UTR GV here on Big Ten Plus. Andrew Morgan goes to work inside. Can't get the lay in to go. Loose ball. Euless tracks it down. Good hustle by Euless there, getting the extra possession for Nebraska. Euless for three. Too strong. Ramey on the take. Euless with the rebound. Griffiths, corner three. No good. Abdul Akeem, kick out. Cliff Davis, three no good. Offensive rebound. And a foul on the board. Yeah, get Morgan on the hold here. Just not able to block out and rebound. Marshall Destermo, the rebound. Sam Hoiberg into the game for Nebraska. The three-point shooting, you recruit to that, but how impressive is just the buy-in to the Offensive rebound, rebounding that Coach Fennell has been able to get for his players. Yeah, it all it all fits together. You know, it's just uh, you know, that offensive rebound creates extra shots for everybody, right? So it's pretty easy to 
you know, get that, that buy-in, but the ability to execute and then have the toughness to, you know, Nebraska is a, a solid rebounding team, and there's been times that they've taken it away from some of our, you know, more athletic, stronger veteran players. Newton gel. Nice take to the rim, but can't get the finish. Abdul Akeem. Kick out again. With Davis, pump fake, three. Drains it. 65-59. Yeah, great, great possession. Nebraska did a good job of running. UT Rio Grande Valley off the three-point line. Davis uses a shot fake, creates space. Knocks it in to cut it to six. Siege and nice find to Bear K. Nifty little finish there by BK. Extra pass to the corner. Pump fake. Baseline jumper. Ramey knocks it down. Six point game. The Vaqueros have, you know, answered. Nebraska's done a good job of building that double-figure lead, and the Vaqueros will. Ramey for three. Another offensive rebound. Ramey going to set it up for the Vaqueros. Ten on the shot clock. Cullen for a screen. Draws the foul. Foul on the Huskers, and that will take us to our under eight media timeout. 7.58 left in the second. 67-61, Nebraska up on UTRGV here on Big Ten Plus. Cut it to six here in the second. Yeah, now up to 13. Threes, 13 of, of 36. Certainly, uh, last three or four minutes got a little rhythm offensively. You have you know, Davis with 12, Thorn with nine, Gingyak with 11, Ramey with 12. Just a lot of versatility and a lot of balanced scoring. Unfortunate there for Ramey. He slips and goes down. He's in some pain. Yeah, just slick over there on that well, sideline. Yeah, that's where the bench area is. So you, you know, could be a wet towel or some spilled water. Certainly uh, looked like the floor had some precipitation on it. For God, he's up and okay. Unfortunate turnover, which is the 17th of the game. We'll take a minute here to make sure that that is dry over there on that sideline. Nebraska at the media or at that, yeah, the media timeout. Worcester came back in and the Bryce Williams who exited with a, what we're hearing might be a cramp is, is now back. 27 for Bryce Williams. His high in a Nebraska uniform. 25 last year against Oregon. His career high is 32 and he scored back. He's at Charlotte in March of 2023. He's got a chance to get the career high. So Nebraska's going with you know, Williams, which is 27, as you mentioned. Worcester is 11 and then also Morgan is the third player in double figures with 10. Oscar's trying to go inside, but thrown away. Out of bounds. No right idea. Just led that post entry pass a little much. Back to back turnovers. Who's trying to Abdul Hakeem? He's created some opportunities for his teammates. To the rim. Nice take and finish from Jalen Washington. That cuts it to four. Yeah. 
Good penetration by Washington, turning down that three, able to penetrate all the way to the rim for the easy layup. True freshman for the Vaqueros. Inside to Morgan, kick out to Williams, over to Wooster. And a foul on Destremo. It's just 16 fouls. Next foul will send the Huskers to the free throw line. Williams lobs it into Wooster. One on one. Strong inside. Nice take and finish there from Wooster. Yeah, you see Wooster just. Sometimes players get in a hurry in the lane. You see it's just poise and patience, playing off two feet, using several ball fakes until he felt like he had an advantage. Abdul Hakeem pulls it out. Ten on the shot clock. Three on the way. Two strong. Gary pulls down the rebound. Williams bringing it up. Gary to the ground, does get it to Williams. Williams finds some space for three, just rolls out. Yeah, did everything but drop for Williams. Ramey on the baseline drive, jumper in the lane is good. Four point game again. Yeah, good patience by Ramey. Up to 14 points. Williams working inside, pump fake. Find some space. Can't get it to go. Loose ball. Vaqueros track it down. Washington again. That one doesn't go. And we've got a timeout. Full timeout. 5-13 left in the second. Yeah, I think they're going to give this an injury timeout for Williams to exit the game. So I don't think there's going to be a stoppage of play. The game's going to start back up here. Yep, there we go. Okay. Coach Hoiberg did signal timeout, and then I think the referee kind of put the story together where it was trying to get Williams off the floor. So Burke is going to come in for Nebraska and also a season. So Williams goes to the end of the bench. Side out of bounds here for Nebraska. 5-13 left in the second. Four-point game. Looks like UT Rio Grande Valley is going to go zone. They've kind of mixed zone in a little bit after timeouts. They, Coach Hoiberg does such a good job of designing plays. This kind of takes you out of your timeout. Gary for three. No good. Skip pass. Three on the way. Wooster tracks down the rebound. Wooster pulls it out. Back out to a Asijin. That's good. Three threes for Connor Asijin tonight. Yeah, Wooster did a great job of pushing. Didn't have anything. Davis looks to respond, but can't get it to go. And Wooster brings it back out and finds Asijin in transition. And a foul on DK Thorne. He's just going to get to the free throw line for Bowen. You see this little snap action here. So it's they run a decision off this counter. You kind of come off the flare, stop, and then come back. It's really hard to guard. 
Ended up holding the decision on the cut. First trip to the free throw line for Connor Asijan. He's got nine points on three of four shooting from the three-point line. Knocks down the front end of the one-on-one. He's into double figures. So four Huskers now into double figures. Lead back up to eight. Sejan goes two for two. Little 5-0 run. Game back up to nine. And a foul on the Vaqueros. Gonna get Gang you hack is going to get the kind of the moving screen. Looks like that's going to be four. So he'll head to the bench. Four oh five left in the second nine point lead for Nebraska. Wooster to a Seijin. Seijin to the rim. 11 point lead for Nebraska. Yeah, same action that they ran to get fouled that time. They went over the top, and the Seijin does a good job of recognizing that, driving the ball for the easy layup. Kick out Abdul Hakim for three. Perke pulls it down. Up to Gary, and a foul on Davis. Timeout on the floor. Three to that senior point guard poise. One time he turned it down in transition and found a season in, in transition for a three. So just you know, having that pass first point guard that that knows what he needs to do to to get his teammates involved. But then Worcester himself has has really picked spots well in this game. You know, in double figure scoring with 13, uh, been at the free throw line five times. You know, just things that you, you know, good teams need good point guard play, and Worcester has done, given that to Nebraska tonight. Gary knocks down the front end of the one and one. 11 point lead. And Nebraska with 10 assists on 22 baskets. That's usually, that's a little on the low side. Two for two goes Gary, 13 point lead. Loose ball and a hustle play by Wooster. We've seen a few of those from him tonight, but it's knocked on the face. It's down on the floor, picked up by Morgan. They really did a good job of kind of reading the play, got a deflection, and then was able to kind of tip the ball head to himself. And just kind of the loose ball, picked up the foul. 13 points for the transfer from Utah. Comes from a family of Husker fans, though. His grandpa, a big Nebraska football fan. Misses the first free throw. Yeah, YouTube, UT Rio Grande Valley still not out of it, though. So efficient offensively. Just need to continually push, look for those threes either in conversion, conversion or out of their set offense. 14-point lead for the Huskers. Three on the way. No good. Bearcat pulls it down. And official timeout. Yankee Hag was down on the ground, and officials calling for a mop here. Maybe a wet floor down here. Battling some condes condensation on this end. Yeah, game you hack, you know, fell. Certainly the floor is wet. 
but to kind of stop it when a player like wasn't an injured player so that's interesting stoppage and the official does have the discretion to protect players from injury and felt like that wet spot could be an issue but certainly coach Hoiberg was not uh, real happy when it ended the five on four fast break opportunity for Nebraska Caros pick up the pressure a little bit here under three to play Gary to the rim and finish nice take for Gary Second field goal. Bucket good by Thorne. Thorne's into double figures. 81-67. Nebraska leading UT RGV. Under 10 on the shot clock, inside to Bear K. And he's going to draw the foul. Oh, one official had a foul. The other one calls a travel. Coach Hoiberg is not happy about it. Baseline official had a block initially. Sideline official calls a travel. We've got a timeout on the floor. Full timeout, 2.05 left in the second, 81 to 67. You know, UTRG has done a good job of, you know, Nebraska pushes it to double figures and then they cut it to six or seven. It's back up to 14. And another whistle and another foul. But I've been in with the Vaqueros they, they've got a good group and you know for this early in the season with with nine you know only five returners nine transfers I like their blend of of skill and size and certainly the the system is going to be hard to guard they like to play fast and I feel like Nebraska is much improved as a rebounding team than they were a year ago just with personnel and being able to to go a little bigger and longer at a few spots and you know there's been possessions that Nebraska hasn't been able to secure a rebound so give UT RGV you know credit to come in here and and really challenge this Nebraska team. Wooster four of eight from the free throw line tonight gets that one to go so five of nine but you can already tell he's not happy with that. <laughs> yeah as a point guard you know have, the ball's going to be in your your hands a lot of late games. Certainly, uh, you know, want point guards to shoot 80 plus percent. Booster's got eight rebounds to go along with his 15 points. Yeah, I really like the front line additions of you know Burke K. Morgan, Mia. There you see. Dunked until with the layup, but I think Worcester's probably the, the most important transfer, just having that veteran point guard that can help Coach Hoiberg late games handle the basketball. I think Bryce Williams has benefited from that in the two games to start the season, the exhibition, and now, you know, for him going for his career high kind of validates you know, I think Wooster, you know, puts him in more of a scoring position for this offense. You know, a lot to, lot to improve on for Nebraska. You know, a few breakdowns, but a lot to like, too. I thought they got a lot of contribution from a lot of players. Wooster, as the shot clock ticking down, knocks down a three. He's up to 18. Shot clock is off. Asijin takes it away. Husker's going to be able to dribble this one out. So win number one for Nebraska on the 2024-2025 basketball season. A 20-point victory.
தாவுடு போட்டு தாவுத்து எடுத்துருக்கோம் ரேஸ் பைக் தானடா அது 